Well, thanks everyone for attending our, what is our second um, webinar um, from Closomat and the OT service. Again, really great to see uh, so many people online today. As I mentioned to those that came previously, we, are, we do know there are a lot of other webinars going on uh, at this present time. So, so again, it's uh, much appreciated the, uh, um, you sparing your time today. Um, so I'm, uh, I'm Stephen Edwards. I, uh, I head up the marketing for Closamat UK. And I'm really today, as I said, is, is all about um, uh, Kate taking you through uh, the learnings that you would have seen as part of the, the agenda for today. But also uh, from really we had a number of requests from people for, for Larry for, from Closamat to also take you through some product information as well. Um, but before we kick off, it would be good to um, just sort of understand who, uh, who's here today and who's not. But what, what I wanted to do was also just to reiterate to people. Uh, sorry, uh, Kay, could we move it on one? Thank you. My fault. Um, that we are very much open for business and that we've taken in quotes. We are starting to see a lot more of these coming in now and orders, but as importantly, deliveries as well. And what's really great news from our perspective was following extensive risk assessment and the most recent government advice that our factory in Stratford is now operative as well, which means um, we're able to get more and more of our stock out when, when people need it, which is great news. So now I've said that, um, I've got a quick poll uh, that I'd like everybody just to uh, tell us who's on today. So if I launch that, what you'll see, you should see in front of you, is what really, uh, what best description broadly fits your job role. Uh, for those who were on it last time, you'll be aware of this. Are you a local authority OT, NHS OT, private? Are you, um, what I would say is if you do a mix of those to choose the one that you do most predominantly, uh, a grants officer, housing association, other government roles, etc. cetera. Um, brilliant um, participation. I'll just give it a couple, uh, about 10 more seconds. Uh, we've got 80% voted, which is great. Okay, slowing down a little bit. I'll uh, still going. It's fantastic. Okay. Okay. Wow, still going. Okay, I will end the poll there. But thanks everybody. Really appreciate the. Uh, what I will I'll share the results with people on this one. So we've got seventy four percent OTs, and given the um, subject matter, I would uh, that's expected really uh, from local authorities. Uh, next NHS again which makes sense and then a really good mix across uh, across other areas of, of people that we deal with and customer base. Brilliant, thanks for that. One other poll um, before we um, before we crack on with the content for today and uh, quite topical um, talking a little bit about G DFG spend. So if it's relevant to your role do you think that your area will be able to spend its full allocation of DFG money for the year of 2020-21? Yes, definitely, probably most. Uh, not sure yet, as it's maybe a little bit too early in, um, in the process or uh, definitely not a no. So again, a really good uh, response rate here up to 50% already. And I, I appreciate for some of you, maybe, as I said, a little bit too early to say, um, but nevertheless, um, it'd be good for us just to gauge where, uh, where you think um, we're at at the moment in terms of that spend. Okay, we're nearly at sort of 70%, which is great. I appreciate for some of you it's not that relevant, but um, okay, okay, we'll stop there. Um, and now poll, I'll share these results with everyone. I think what's interesting is that for the majority, but not all of you, 40% so are not sure yet, it's too early to say, um, sort of 50 odd percent if you put the top two together, probably most and definitely in terms of that spend level. So uh, I think that's really positive to see. Thank you. Okay. So um, now I'd like to introduce you uh, to the two people that are presenting today. We've got Larry Beal, who's the Senior Product Specialist from, uh, from Closamat. Larry's been with the business a number of years. And it's great that we've got him on board today. Those that were on the webinar a couple of weeks back will know, uh, will know Larry from that. And Larry will be taking you through, as I said, uh, more around 
the product and a little bit more detail around that product today because I know a number of you asked for that last time. Uh, and also uh, great to introduce uh, Kate Sheehan, um, the OT service director. And uh, Kate's job really today is to take you through the content for the next sort of half an hour. So that's enough for me. I'll hand you over to Kate. Thank you. Hello everybody and thank you so much for coming. Uh, like I said last time, I find this kind of slightly bizarre speaking to myself in my front room, so um, bear with me. Um, I've only got half an hour and I could probably speak on this topic for probably half a day if not more. So those are your learning outcomes for today. I want to just crack on and just talk about the assessment process and what we can do with uh, kind of future-proofing bathrooms for people with progressive illnesses. I don't know about you guys and I don't want to dwell on this too much but in my practice or our practice we very much work on the person environment and occupation model. The reason I use this is that it's very easy to explain to clients using this model what our role is and how we're going to try and actually get that key occupational performance and basically optimise their function throughout their deteriorating condition. Um, so if you want to read more about that, there's a, a reference there for you. But let's look at all those three sections. Firstly, the client. The client has to be the most important person to us. And as we all know as uh, professionals, um, our code of ethics says the client is paramount and it has to be at the centre of everything that we do with them. So we need to build a rapport especially with people with deteriorating conditions because we're going to have to have some very detailed complex and difficult discussions with them try and gain an insight into their understanding of the condition i think this is more key now than it was when i first qualified in 1987 believe it or not we didn't have the internet and people couldn't google their condition Whereas now people are Googling their condition and have lots of inform information about it. So we need to understand how much they know uh, in, in reality. What are their values? What's important to them? What's important to me might not be important to them. So we need to listen to what they have to say about themselves and their family. Do they have any desires and wants? They're going through a significant change in uh, their mindset in, you know, what do I want to achieve before I'm unable to achieve things? Uh, and we need to understand what their desires are, what their needs are, what their wants are with regards to their home. What their role is in the environment, you know, you could be a mother, you could be a father, you could be an aunt, you could be actually a grandparent in a three generational home. So what are your roles and understanding what their roles are? I think the key is about honesty and openness and trying to maintain for that, for that client dignity at all times. And I just wanted to put in here consent because we need to talk to lots of people. So we need to have consent to share information. So we need to do the assessment of the client's abilities now um, by observation and questioning. Uh, and I just wanted to bring in a case study here uh, where you have to be very careful about what you're doing. I had a client in London who um, we were called in to look at just purely hoisting uh, for their future home. Um, and I met the client, the client had motor neurone disease and I met him at work. And I thought I was going to see somebody who was quite able. When I arrived, he was um, in a postural chair, full support. The only movement he really had was his finger, which he could control his mouse on. I looked at him and thought, this gentleman's not going to last um, a week, two weeks. And it was interesting because what we needed to do was carry on working so the family could see that something was happening. Uh, the gentleman actually died two days later, but we had to do it. So you've got to think about how your reaction and your potential plan might not come to fruition, but it's a means to enable somebody's mental health through their condition. Seek medical advice on their progression. Um, I'm not, I, I work very much from a social model of disability, but sometimes you need to understand the medical information. 
about what how their condition is going to progress if the medics understand or know that there's going to be some level of progression or what level of progression is going to be but also speak to your colleagues about it, speak to your physiotherapists, speak to your Clotimac reps about how uh, the products can actually meet the individual's needs and also talk to the carers. All that information is going to get you a better overview, overview of your client's needs. But please don't forget there's other people in that household um, that might need things. So when you're designing, you've got to think about them. That could be partners, children, other family members. But also remember, there are pets and they are just as important sometimes as children and family members partly because they give you unconditional love and they don't answer back. Um, but again, sometimes the bathroom is used for them as well. So people wash their dogs in the bathroom and how are those kind of tasks going to be uh, carried on when you adapt your property? I talked about this last time, but measure, measure, measure. You need to measure your clients, measure the equipment now and measure the equipment that you may need to use in the future. Um, for example, um, a shower chair or a wall fix um, shower um, um, bench. All those things we need to think about um, when uh, we're designing for progressive conditions. Because we might not actually say to the client, well, I need to have the, the bathroom two meters, uh, 2.5 meters in length, because I think you're gonna need a shower um, uh, bench in the future. But we need to have that in our minds so we know we're designing for the future. So the tasks, again, it's looking at what tasks are carried out in the bathroom. Um, and uh, what tasks might be carried out in the future. So at the moment, somebody might be walking with crutches, um, able to get on and off a standard toilet, but you know that there's going to be progressive difficulties with bowel management in the future. So we need to understand what tasks might be happening. And certainly for me, it's looking about self-catheterization. How are they going to manage to do that on the toilet themselves, maybe initially, and then with support? What tasks do the rest of the family need to carry out in the bathroom? Um, and this is probably one of the biggest ones to think about if a family member, the, the person with the condition has young children, how is our changes to the bathroom going to impact them as well? And it's all about discussing them. But I want to clearly get onto the environment. This is what I really want to get onto. The specification that you do, um, will come from the assessment that you have from the client and the task. And the specification has to be a collaboration with the client. If you don't collaborate with the client, I can tell you now it won't work uh, and you'll have problems. And you need to explain all the way along why you're doing something or why you're advising that family to do something. And for me, the best thing is at the end of the design process that you actually write it out and you both all agree it and you all sign to agree it. Um, that is really good practice. So let's look at space. Is this the only bathroom? That's one of the first questions you need to be asking. How is your changes in potentially the only bathroom going to impact on everyone else? If it's the only bathroom, you need to think about other people. Um, you need to measure the space. Don't forget anything. And I always nowadays take loads and loads of pictures because however much you draw and you think you've got it, you get back, back to your office and you think, no, I need to have a look at that and I need to change that. Ask questions about alterations they've done in the past. Have they got previous plans? That often makes it easier because you will often have drawings of drainage um, and um, where the pipe works coming in. Uh, and also, I know we're not surveyors. Um, I know that's not our skill base, but look where the drainage is. You can tell whether where the effluent pipe is coming out of the house. You can see where it's coming down the side of the house and you can probably work out where it's going out through the property. That's quite useful if you're wanting to change round products and knowing what you can do. And then seeking advice from your grants officer or surveyor just to say, uh, you know, can you tell me from your expertise, is this going to be possible? But at the beginning, it gives you an idea of what you can do. Draw it. 
Now, I've put up two drawings here. One's an IDAP drawing, which looks very professional, but yesterday I actually did a, my first scale drawing for a long time uh, of a bathroom. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's just getting the scale drawing so you can work out what's going to work and what's not. And it's also important at this point to, to mention that Closimat, you know, do do specifications of the installation of their toilets as well, so they can help you with that process um, when you're looking at it. So I want to just look at structure. Again, walls and ceiling. We often talk about toilets and baths and showers and hand basins, but actually we almost need to go back a little bit into the property, the property itself. We need to future proof for this um, client. So we need to look at the walls and the ceilings and whether they're going to meet long term need, be that hoist requirements, um, be it um, for grab rails to be fitted, be it for like you can see in the image for a shower bench or changing bench to be fitted. And actually when you're adapting a bathroom, the most cost effective time to do the reinforcing of the walls is when you're stripping it out. Trying to retro do that is virtually impossible. So for the sake of a kind of, yes, it will cost financially, but that financial cost way outweighs the, the kind of long term um, having to redo it. But also, if you know that you can put a grab rail anywhere in your bathroom for your client, it means as then these changes so quickly, there can be no rails one week and you can get a technician or a plumber in to change things the next week, knowing confidently that those walls can take those grab rails. But it's also ceilings and, uh, and you know ceiling track hoists because hoists can be fitted in bathrooms on the wall or the ceiling. But again, just think about what is this client going to need in the future? Are they going to be likely to be hoisted? Which in most cases they are. So think, can I retrofit a, um, a ceiling track hoist? Right. Just going, I'm just going to say one more thing about structure is it is best if you only do one lot of big building work so it's worth doing it properly the first time and it's looking at space long term for that client so at the moment they might be working with crutches but they might use a wheelchair so you need to design for the worst case scenario which is a wheelchair plus carers that's the space you're going to have to require you don't want to be doing what i call adding little bits on, little bits on, because actually not only is that not cost effective, it's also disruptive to the family and actually getting it right in the first place makes it work well for that family. So they're not having to redo things as the condition deteriorates and the stress that that condition deteriorating is causing for the family. Um, little, little point at this point as well, just think about children, it's children who progress as well. A child doesn't stay a child, a child grows and becomes an adult. So when you're um, designing for children, design as that child is an adult, because again, you don't want to be putting things on if you can possibly additional building work, um, because it just costs and it's not cost effective. So when you're clinically reasoning your structure, it's all around, um, I need to reinforce these walls because we might have to retrofit grab rails. I need to reinforce these walls because I know this person is going to need a shower seat at some point. Um, very easily to clinically reason. They might not need it now, but we know for a fact they're going to need it in the future. So let's look in more detail at the, at the products within uh, the bathroom. It is when toilet, what toilet is needed now, but it's also thinking about what toilet may be needed in the future. And I think sometimes we just have to think, um, yes, a person can use a standard toilet now, um, but we know that they're going to need, for example, a closet mat in the future. The client's not ready psychologically to accept a closet mat at the moment, but we need to plan for it. So it's making sure that when you do the design, you put in the electrics and the plumbing that's required for the closet mat. So when that client goes, I'm not managing my toilet, toileting, I don't want my wife wiping my bottom, 
please can you do something we know that we can put it in really quickly and again it's about this it's cheaper to do it now than it is to try and retrofit and it's also a lot easier for people like Larry who's coming into the specification you can show them the drawing and say that's where the electrics are that's where the plumbing is how quickly can you install the coslet so you need to think about things like that as well look at how toilets can be used in a different way because sometimes you know that the deterioration is going quite rapidly um, the client's not quite ready for a closet mat toilet but a closet mat toilet can be used like a standard toilet so you can just say well let's put it in you don't have to use the functions it's just a standard toilet you can flush it like you would do but it's there if you need it and it's also looking at things like aesthetics um, for me my bathroom is a place of beauty and it's trying to get a bathroom that looks nice because you're going through this significant change in your physical abilities, sometimes in your, your mental ability, your cognitive abilities as well. So we need to create something that feels familiar, normal, and something that people uh, feel happy and confident to be in that space. Right. Just want to um, talk about um, hand basins. This, this is the Presslet um, Select which is a height adjustable hand basin that Closomat uh, do do. But when you're looking at hand basins, just think of the shape, think of the size, think of the depth, because actually all of those have an impact. So for example, on this one, often with progressive illnesses, you lose the strength and ability in your muscles. And to be able to do functional activities, you need to rest your arms, to be able to clean your teeth, be able to wash your face, be able to shave and, and with this sink like this where you've got slightly wider at the sides you can rest your arm the other benefit of these types of sinks is you've got a flat edge at the back so you can put products on there so you're not leaning too far to get it uh, and, and also with a product like this is you've got a handle at the front so you can pull in on your wheelchair which is great Sometimes you might actually need a curve at the front to get closer in. You might need something maybe a slightly deeper, but it's about the client. What's going to work for the client? Um, I always say, particularly with my husband, he won't have any problems with reach because he's got an orangutan arms. His arms are really long, so he could sit way back and still reach the tax. So again, those kind of measurements are key. Some people have short arms. I'm just basically short, so I would have to have a... a, a a shorter depth to allow me to get to the taps. So think about height, think about height adjustments. I do use height adjust adjustable units for hand basins a lot for people with progressive conditions, partly because you, you will start standing, you might go perch, you might go sometimes um, wheelchair, sometimes standing, and then permanent wheelchair. So if you can adjust, adjust the basin, the presslet one is perfect for that. You can just change it as you need it so it meets the family's needs as well for children or adults. Uh, think about the taps. Um, how easy are they to use? Do we need lever taps? Do we need um, sensor taps? Uh, and then again, as you can see, it's looking at drainage, keeping the drainage well out of the way of legs. Um, and then my passion is mirrors. Um, you need a mirror above a basin. Most people look at a mirror, even when they're cleaning teeth, shaving, putting on makeup, um, cleaning your face. You need a mirror. And it's thinking about where you position that mirror as well. Um, it is, think about somebody standing, but also somebody sitting. So there's no point in putting it so high up that when you actually sit, all you can see is your, your eyes. You've got to think long term about it. Uh, and also, I always say, um, I'm not sure grant officers always agree to having a mirror, but actually it allows for facilitating access to and use of a hand basin, because part of the use of a hand basin is shaving, makeup and everything else. It'd be interesting to hear what grants officers say about that. Moving on, bath, shower or both. Do we need both? Do we need to plan now that yes, we're going to do some alteration structure in the bathroom to allow greater space, but we're going to put in a level access shower under the bath, uh, under, in the bathroom, and then a bath on the top for the moment, but we know that we can remove the bath at a later stage 
um, and we will have a level access shower. And that just takes a little bit of thinking about plumbing, a little bit of th thinking about tiling, but it's, it's easy to do. But when you're thinking about that, it's also thinking about heights of um, riser bars on showers and things. And just, just going back to the bath, actually, I just want to say is how can you clinically justify that? Um, and my clinical justification will probably be around the client likes, uh, um, has always bathed, prefers to bathe, finds it uh, easier to bathe. Um, and actually the children can bathe as well. And I know we're talking about facilitating access and use of uh, a bar shower or both, but we have to think about that access and use. And use is a very personal thing. Uh, and it's very much down to the client's um, personal preference. If you've always bathed, then I think we should be encouraging um, our grants officers or in the private sectors, our um, solicitors to look at that. So it's about justifying, this is what the client always did. This is what um, they feel comfortable doing. But if we design it so we can put in drainage underneath, then we're going to long-term future-proof this, this property. And it's also about that kind of psychological with the client about not admitting their progression. Uh, it's again about the toilet, isn't it? It's, it's knowing that we can manage it, the client with their uh, mobility issues now and their cognitive issues now, but we need to think about the future. Think about controls, what's easy to use. There are some fantastic showers out there now. Um, you know, the um, Triton um, Safeguard, the um, Myra Sport are, are very common ones, but there are also some very good digital ones as well. And again, we need to look at what's going to work for the client. And there's digital ones which are thermostatic, which you can set a, a, a client. Um, uh, um, it's like setting a BMW car seat. You can say, this is mum, this is dad, this is child. Um, and again, as you get cognitive deterioration, if they can see an image of themselves, they can press a button, they know that the temperature on that shower is going to be perfect for them. Um, and again, my plea, I, there's lots of things here, but I just want to talk about waste in showers. Can you think where you put your waste? Never put the waste where somebody's feet are going to be or where a carer's feet are likely to be because as soon as you do that you're causing instability so if you can put a a, a waste in the corner or a linear waste um, around the outside of the shower that is so much better than a, a shower drain in the place where you're likely to have your feet right I want to talk about three things that are often not considered in great detail flooring um, you need to think long term for carry use because if you've stripped out the bathroom, you don't want to be putting in a, a flooring later later in the day. So think about um, what flooring you want. The classic go to is vinyl, um, and that's great. It's R10. It's slip resistant. Nothing is is anti slip. It's slip resistant. Um, but there are so many more choices out there nowadays. Uh, you can look at tiles, and actually the difference between a vinyl floor and tiles is not significantly different. And we do have a duty to give our clients choice. If we know somebody is um, going into a wheelchair, one of the biggest problems with vinyl floors is that the rubber on the floor rubs and you get these black marks, which are really difficult to clean. And actually sometimes tiles might be better but aesthetics as well. But safety is key here because we know somebody's going to go from using mobility equipment down to maybe just needing supervision and then probably carer input. So we need to think about the carers and, and what flooring we're putting down. Once again, look at lighting. Lighting is one of those things in the bathrooms that's never quite right. The, the average lighting in the UK bathroom is the ceiling light and occasionally you have a light under the, uh, over the mirror. We need to think in a little bit more detail, especially with people with progressive conditions. What tasks, very intimate tasks, are going to be done? I spoke earlier about self-catheterisation. If you're self-catheterising while sat on the toilet, 
or sat in front of the toilet on your wheelchair to catheterize. Have you got enough light to get that catheter in the right place? The task is very intimate and you need that direct light down onto that. So we need to think about that. So the, to the lighting around the toilet is really key, but the lighting in the shower is just as key because as somebody prog progresses, we're looking at issues around um, pressure and we're looking at potential pressure sores. We need to be able to see the condition of their skin. We need to be able to highlight very quickly that there are red marks or we need to address something there's been a bang on the toe if you don't have good lighting for carers or uh, or for the client themselves to be able to review their skin integrity it's it's going to be really difficult um, so getting really good task lighting in the bathroom is key and then finally my biggest bugbear is heating um, Let's be brutal here. We're naked in the bathroom most of the time. Even when you're sat on the toilet, you have your trousers down by ankles and you, had your, you have your bottom half exposed. Because tasks take longer with people with progression, uh, progressive conditions, we need to think about keeping that room quite warm. It's a balance between carers being able to care in a warm room and also warmth. But we know for a fact, say somebody like uh, who has muscle sclerosis, they have issues with temperature control. So we need to be able to put in proper heating. And it might be that we put in good heating to start with, but we add in a socket or a spur in the ceiling to retrofit additional heating if we need to. So just think very carefully about how are we going to keep that bathroom warm to allow somebody to carry on doing those tasks in a comfortable uh, temperature. I have and you can, I think, person you can clinically justify is a separate heating system, maybe an underfloor heating system in the bathroom which you can control separately to keep it nice and warm for a client. The only caveat is Make sure you work out, you have clear plans of where your underfloor heating is. So if you have to fit equipment around toilets, you know where it is so you're not going to damage it. Colour. Um, although looking at most progressive conditions, um, colour contrast um, or, or visual issues are not one of the biggest uh, impairments, it is always worth looking at colour contrast in a bathroom long term because especially if you have an older person who's got a progressive uh, condition, something like Parkinson's, they might have um, visual issues as well. So look at colour contrast and how you can create a bathroom where you can see uh, where your products are. But also colour affects mood and we need to look at um, providing a bathroom that actually meets not only their physical, their cognitive, but their emotional needs as well. And um, I don't know about you, but some of the adaptations I've done in the past, I can look back on and think they were horrendous because they were so institutional white and probably not a nice space to be in. But actually, as you have a progressive condition, you're going to be spending longer in the bathroom. So we need to think about the bathroom as a space where a lot of activities are taking place and sometimes quite unpleasant activities. So we've got to create a bathroom that they feel comfortable in. So this is a, a whistle-stop tour through progressive illnesses and um, design. But your reasoning for the products comes out of your assessment and their needs within the bathroom. So, for example, I want to go for a... Um, uh, infrared tap because this person's already showing hand function problems um, and the ability to turn a tap or even do a lever is going to be impacted whereas if I have a sensor tap I know they're going to be able to carry on washing their hands and in this day and age with what's going on at the moment washing hands I think we need to look at as a key functional activity going forward. Also we need to look at something like a toilet going forward. We might not need a wash dry toilet at the moment like a closet mat, but actually we need to look at the function. Do we want to put our clients, partners or parents in that position where they actually have to wipe um, their partner's bottom? 
we have to remember that the relationship between um, a, a wife or a partner um, and her husband is not just about care. It's a sexual relationship. It's a loving relationship. And actually what is important is to keep that loving sexual relationship and look at how we can address those kind of functional activities in a different way. And if that means we can put in a toilet that does that for them, just think of the emotional um, benefits of both the client and the wife. And finally, I just want to stress that a bathroom is not just a functional place. Um, it's not just for going for a wee or having a poo. There's lots of activities in there. And yes, money is restricted. And yes, we need to really look at how we clinically reason. But we need to do, as therapists, a holistic assessment. And although we not, might not be able to meet all their needs through grant funding, there may be, they want some choice and want to put in some funding themselves to meet those more um, leisure related activities. Um, and it is about access and use of the whole bathroom. Uh, and the grant does talk about safety and use of that space with, within the home. So remember, it's not just a functional space. It's so much more. Uh, and the wonderful thing about being an occupational therapist, we can look at it holistically from a physical and emotional and a cognitive way. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. That's absolutely fantastic. Um, hello, everybody. Just going to get the rest of the uh, presentation queued up. Hopefully everybody's got that now. Um, yeah, thanks again, Kate, and thanks uh, again. So many people have uh, joined us today for uh, the webinar. I'm going to do a bit of a whistle stop tour through some of the um, products that we do and some of the adaptation that we can uh, help deal with uh, progressive conditions. But first of all, we've got another quick poll for you. So, when you're choosing a wash dry toilet, what do you specify? Is it Cosmat every time? Is it Clozomat sometimes? Is it uh, Clozomat never? Or I don't currently specify wash dry toilets. And we'll give you a few seconds to go through and uh, get voting on that. Uh, we did hear from the last webinar that some people can't see the polls coming up. There's certain, um, certain um, internal servers and stuff don't let them, but uh, we'll have a little look at that and then that'll come down automatically once everybody's uh, had a, a vote. Just give you a little bit more time to have a look at that. Good stuff. There we go. Wonderful. Right then, uh, as Kate has mentioned, there's so many things that um, can be done to adapt uh, bathrooms. Uh, at Closomat, we do pretty much everything that goes into a bathroom other than a bath. Uh, we leave the baths to the, to the, uh, the specialists. Um, but from the work that we've done in with the changing places movement in hygiene rooms out in the community, we can offer a pretty full range of not only the famous toilets, but um, chairs, changing benches, ceiling track hoists, um, shower seats, uh, the full range of press lit wash hand basins and changing benches, uh, drop down rails and also apre body dryers as well. So although we're, we're known for our toilets, we are much more than uh, just a toilet provider. And all of that is available for, from specification uh, and quotation right through to in-house install as well. Everything that we supply is um, fully compliant to UK uh, regulations all of our products that involve water are RAS approved and the company has a raft of uh, ISO um, accreditations covering environments and management. Okay. The, the thing that we are most famous for, as we said, is the Palma Vita toilet. Um, it's still very much the UK's number one wash dry toilet. Uh, it has the most effective wash dry performance of any toilet out there on the market. It's got nearly four times the wash power of some. Uh, but it can be very gentle as well. It can be as powerful or as gentle as it's required to be. It is hugely versatile and adaptable. And going back to what Kate was saying, um, with the progressive conditions, everything on a closet mat is retrofittable. 
uh, or retro removable as well. Okay, it's very simple to use. Um, it can be used hands free. It has a, a wide range of safe working loads. The standard seating um, options on them are rated up to 30 stone, are actually drop tested beyond that, but we also have other options as well, which we'll come to in a minute. Um, and there are a whole range of service and warranty options available. Okay, this is a real sort of hot topic when we go and do, um, when we do team meetings. Uh, standard units have a, a, a 12 month warranty on. You can now have Palmer Life, which gives you a full cover for a decade's worth of service and warranty. Uh, there might be people out on the, on the course today who um, don't know how a toilet works. So this is a quick animation of how uh, Palmer Vita works. Uh, there we go. So we're just gonna see a, a little ghostly figure arrive. We're not gonna go a, a full description of what happens on a toilet, but a closet mat will work when somebody sits down on it, it engages the switch and um, the toilet knows that the user's there. They then get on with the business at hand and when they're finished in its simplest form, they can use an elbow pad, you can see highlighted in red there, to brush and hold. That triggers a flush, triggers a wash event. And then when they release the elbow pad, warm air will start to circulate around the pan. And three and a half minutes later, the person should be at least towel dry. And away he goes. There we go. Um, one of the things that we get asked about a lot is the various wash functions that the toilet has. And there are three different options for uh, wash arms. Uh, I've actually got one here. So um, there are our normal single spray. And the single spray is the most popular option that we have by far, okay? The main reason that we're putting a wash dry toilet in for somebody is to attend to their bowel hygiene. And for the vast majority of cases, a single sp uh, spray will work for them, okay? Um, we also have a single extended spray arm, which comes out a little bit further. These are useful for either people that have a large gluteal shelf, bariatric clients, for instance, also for pediatric clients as well. So anybody with a, a slightly shorter leg where we need to reach the target. The final one is the twin extended, okay? Or the often referred to as a feminine hygiene spray, although we do have people that use it in, in slightly different ways. Uh, this twin spray has been available on a closet mat for over 30 years. And it's very important to know that just because a user is a, uh, a female, it doesn't automatically mean that a twin spray is suitable. Generally, we find that the single spray and concentrating on that main target area is, uh, is the best option. But if, if needs be, if somebody's having trouble with um, maybe recurring urinary tract infections or monthly hygiene, uh, then uh, particularly for uh, people with uh, young girls with learning difficulties, this can be a really uh, great, great bonus. So lots of options there for them. Okay, other things when specifying a closet mat are the transfer considerations. Uh, there are five different height settings for a Palma Vita from standard, and then we've got four different heights of plinths that can go underneath the units. They're all hidden away these days, so they all look really smart. Uh, you don't see the plinth. Um, we can also, with our Lima Vita, which is the wall hung version of this toilet, we can do some clever things as well with our heights um, with that. You might want to consider the person's support needs around the toilet. So there are a range of arms that can be attached to the closet mat itself. Um, the loadings for those then go down through the floor. So often if you've got a, a situation where you're putting a toilet in and the, uh, the rear wall can't take a drop down rail or there's not room, then uh, our integrated arms are a great option. Plus there are other ways that you can um, adapt the toilet once those arms are on. The picture that we've got there has got some lateral supports on there. It's also got a, um, a belt on it to stop people submarining off the toilet and also grips on the arms as well. Um, but lots of different options there. Uh, shower chairs are also another part of the transfer considerations, but we'll come to those in just a moment. But another option, we spoke about it on our last uh, seminar, uh, was the air -elect lifters. These can be uh, a godsend for people in, in certain situations. If people are 
having pain while doing a transfer or if the extreme risk of a slip or a fall an aerolet can offer support during a transfer and, it, and they, they make a, a huge difference they're, they're a cracking bit of kit okay moving on seating options now one of these i'm sure is very familiar to everybody it's sort of one of those famous products that everybody talks to us about um but there are um we could argue there are seven different seating options for a, a palma vita from the standard ones through to the options seen there uh, plus there are pediatric supports that can fit directly onto toilets as well um, the standard seat covers most people's needs it's very very strong it's designed for side transfers um, it um, is a nice white um, plastic construction and um, meets most people needs there's an adult soft seat option there as well we, it's in, in blue so it does uh, offer a uh, color contrast useful for people with visual impairments and then there's a junior soft seat version of it that's, that's got a reduced aperture in it offers a bit more support it's also quite handy for adults that have got um, maybe muscle wasted issues or, or dietary issues the last two I like to talk about together because one of them is the infamous Big John seat okay as a as a nation as a, as a world population we're all getting a bit bigger um, surely in you know, lockdown and comfort eating I'm definitely getting a bit bigger myself it doesn't matter how much cycling I do um, the uh, Big John has a slightly smaller aperture than a standard size seat okay uh, it is slightly longer and slightly wider uh, definitely offers a bit more um, support for some people but sometimes I like to look at the Big John as a uh, one of two options for bariatric clients and especially for adult um, males is that the bariatric clients sometimes don't have enough space to get everything they need to get into a pan into a pan so the adult soft seat is often a uh, the adult open seat sorry is often a, a really good um, consideration if you've got bariatric or pediatric clients and you're considering wash dry toilets get your product specialist involved okay uh, control systems there are four different control systems on a closet um, the first one we spoke about during the little animation there um, is the the flush buttons that are on uh, the system they can always be used as a regular uh, flush control when somebody's sitting on the toilet they'll work as a they'll operate the wash and dry function the most popular uh, alternative that we have is on the left there the hand or foot control touch sensitive hand switch um, hugely versatile bit of kit it is very simple you know, some people sometimes say it's a bit rudimentary but it's always my go-to uh, it runs on air really reliable um, we've got the little wall brackets now so that they're not just left on the top of the, the systems um, they can be used as a foot switch as well so if hand function is changing then um, there are other options that can be used I've seen people use them as chin switches just the weight of a hand will trigger them as well really a really a versatile little thing proxy switches um, as with, with current situations touching um, things and it might well um, maybe we want to avoid that some more so in a, a multi-user site a proxy switch may well be a better option and then we've got the infrared remote controls as well so all bases covered with uh, with the palm of easy control options okay shower chair considerations it's always a hot topic on uh, uh, on team meetings that we do and realize that we're kind of flying through stuff here and we'll, we'll put a question at the end about whether um, everybody out there would like a bit more in-depth uh, training about these things we've also had a, a couple of uh, specific questions came through about um, shower chairs so we'll talk about those again one of the watchwords with this is if in doubt always get hold of your product specialists uh, we are going to be putting out a document later on this year that covers shower chair uh, compatibility with the toilet so that uh, you've got a, a go-to reference but do get a hold of your product specialists they, they're au fait with all the products that work and don't work with, with um, bits of kit so we'll start on the left um, that's Rifton HTS pediatric support. We did have a question come through uh, asking which supports work with it. There are a number of them, uh, but the HTS is always my favorite one. It's always the go-to. Great build quality. Um, the importers giraffe are great to deal with. 
It's really easy to use. It's highly adaptable. There are maybe I think it's four or five different bases that are available for it now, including travel options, uh, tilt in space options. And the medium and large riftons will work over uh, a closer map very nicely indeed. Okay. Uh, again, the rifton can, with a special bracket, actually be attached directly on top of the closer map. So if there isn't space for holding the, the uh, storing the base sections of it, they can be left somewhere else. And there are all sorts of um, harness uh, and thoracic supports, and thigh supports, uh, different seat pads. It's a hugely adaptable bit of kit. So we can get a really good outcome with those. Um, the more traditional glide about that's shown on the right there, um, often with a, a, a closer mat, you have to have a, uh, a plinth underneath the toilet, not all the time, um, but to match most standard height shower chairs, you'd put a 50 mil plinth underneath it, uh, and you'd need to have a control system of some sort. As you can see in the image there, the seat uh, and the lid are in an upright position. So the toilet's not going to know whether someone is on it or off. We need to turn off a little seat switch, make a couple of adjustments to it, and then we can get really good outcomes with use of with shower chair. We work with a, a huge range of shower chairs, freeway, uh, care and independence, uh, certain Osprey and certain RAS chairs. Uh, and again, as I said, we'll be putting a document out later this year that uh, runs through those. Um, Important when choosing chairs that you're using ones that are specific for wash dry toilets with skirts around the edges of them. Um, we had a question in um, regarding tilting space shower chairs. Now they are definitely get us involved whenever dealing with a tilting space shower chair. There are certain things we need to do to the toilet. They're often a, a more complex case. But the question was regarding whether somebody can be inclined, rec reclined I should say, on their tilt and space shower chair whilst over a toilet. Ideally, we want the person to be on a, a level chair, okay? Uh, when it's reclined, what we're doing is the, the back of the chair would impact on the back of the system and it moves the target forward. Now we can deal with some of that with an extended shower arm, um, but by having the chair angled, you're at more risk of things being ejected out from between the seat and the, the shower chair. There are ways around it, and again, with um, tilt and space shower chairs, it could be combined with maybe a butterfly harness to keep the person supported while it was level. There's also neck supports and head supports that are available with most um, shower chairs. So there are ways around it, but definitely if it's if that complex a case, get us involved and we can help and advise. Oh, there we go, one, two, forward. So which brings us quite neatly on to um, what the product specialist team at Closamat can do for you. Um, client assessments um, in, in partnership with our occupational therapy um, teams out there that we work with is really what we, uh, we love to do. Um, we love normally in normal situations getting out there and seeing everybody and I'll come to a bit more about what we're doing to overcome those difficulties at the moment in just a second. Uh, but we're there to deal with product specification and demonstration, carrying out those installation surveys that Kate mentioned earlier on. If you're in any doubt, just get us, get hold of us and we'll come and help, okay? We can run through service and warranty packages as well. If you are dealing with us, uh, if, if we're being involved in the specification of our products, we take full responsibility for making sure that those products will meet your client's needs, okay? There's so many different products that we do and then even if we take the palm of each, for instance, there are thousands of different configurations of that product. Um, but so lean upon our experience out there. Let us take the responsibility for them. And if we've got it wrong, we will make sure we're, we're only human after all. We sometimes make mistakes, but we will make sure that those products will meet the, the, the client's needs and we will bear any costs if we've got it wrong. Right. That's all part of our no quibble guarantee. Um, it is different times. Um, we have started using phone assessment much more than uh, ever. Most of the time in sort of up to the start of this year, if you had a requirement for a closer mat, we would arrange an assessment in somebody's home, would come out to the joint or a solo visit to make sure that site surveys are carried out. Obviously with the restrictions and even though things are lifting a little bit in England, 
uh, we certainly think and people are certain to tell us that the restrictions go to people's homes will be around for a while. Um, we have started doing phone assessments, we've started doing video assessments, uh, and we've been pretty successful with them. You can get, obviously a face-to-face -face visit is preferable, but the video chat is certainly uh, a good alternative to it. Uh, if we are going to be going out onto site, uh, we have worked uh, very hard to get fully risk assessed and document site survey um, set up. Okay, social distancing has got to be a key part of that. And we're going to try and do as much uh, fact finding before we get out to sites to make sure that we can limit the, the exposure times for our staff and also our, our clients. And let's face it, a lot of our clients are within that vulnerable category. Uh, hopefully, maybe things will return to normal. Um, who knows when that'll be, and we'll be able to just kind of continue as normal. Or will this be the new normal? We'll see, but we're working hard to make sure that we can offer all the support that uh, uh, you need from us. So uh, that being said, I mean, uh, that is a, a, a whistle-stop tour through um, some of the, the products. When a team meeting, that section would often last for around about an hour and we get a lot of um, interaction with people that might want to learn more about certain ways that you can specify the products. So that being said, would you like further product training from Closimap? Uh, either via a webinar like this one, uh, via a virtual team meeting, so we can carry on and we could do a Zoom team meeting with your, uh, your specific teams. Uh, we hope that we'll be able to be uh, returning to face-to-face -face team meetings as well. Or you might feel that you're completely au fait with the product uh, offering out there and uh, don't need anything. So if you want to have a quick uh, vote on that, and then when everybody's uh, finished, Steve will take that down for us. You're going, Larry. You're going. I want to see those things. There's so many of you on this today that uh, uh, you know it's going to take a little while for everybody to get their votes in. Just give you a little bit of time to, to go through there. The Q&A boxes are, are there and the chat is there as well. And if you've got anything specific uh, that you'd like to ask us about. Okay, I think we're nearly there. Just leave it a couple of seconds. Okay. Fantastic stuff. Thank you, Steve. So, uh, over to you, Steve. Thank you, Larry. If you push it on one more, that would be great. Um, okay, yeah. Um, certainly to find out more, we have a, a dedicated email address for sales. Uh, so it's sales at closermap.co.uk. We have a live chat uh, facility that's uh, open nine to five but um, and it's easily accessible through this link or through our website but if you want to leave a message then we'll pick that up the following day uh, and also we have our website as well which is closermap.co.uk um okay move on Larry please thank you Oops. and again so uh, just a quick review for everyone um um a really really fantastic sort of half an hour or so from from Kate taking you through how you assess the client needs, the client wants within the bathroom, uh, a greater insight to how to complete the client specific specification and meeting those long term demands, uh, and further developing that knowledge to provide that clear clinical reasoning. It was a, for me a really fantastic half an hour. So thank you, Kate. And, and also for Larry, for, for 20 minutes, uh, as he said, a whistle stop top, uh, tour through. Um, through the Closamat products, he, he says usually it takes up a good hour and a half to uh, take people through that. So, uh, so it's good to see on the the poll that a lot of people wanted a, a dedicated webinar specifically on products, which we will uh, we will definitely arrange. Um, we have sort of run out of time on the Q and A. I know there have been a lot of people um, already chatting and getting answers through from uh, from Kimberly and um, and Adam. If there's anybody else that wants to put a few of those through now, then please fire, the, fire those up. Um, seen a couple in there. Um, a few people raised their hands. Okay, I'll give that a couple of minutes while uh, the team sort of try and answer some of those. There's okay. a good one here about soil pipes in the, um, in the bathroom, Steve, actually, which I wouldn't mind just 
um, yeah. touching on. And it kind of links back as well to the shower chair considerations. The, if we're talking about it in a, in a Clozomat um, way, then the Palmer Vita toilets can take a soil pipe um, and a P trap, an S trap, which comes through the wall, P trap comes through the floor, and left and right um, entry soil pipes are available as well. But especially when you're talking about um, self propelled shower chairs, tilt and space shower chairs, and the rift and supports as well, and some other pediatric supports, you want to really try and avoid the side entry soil pipes. Um, T70 or, or, or Kera propelled shower chairs, the wheels will impact against the side uh, against the side entry soil pipes on T80 or tilting space type chairs. Then also the side in, uh, soil pipes will be a, a restriction for it. So it really comes back to a case of if you're looking at toilets and other bits of equipment, we can help with that. Okay. Thank you, Larry. Okay. Um, thank you everyone. I know there's still a lot of good questions on there. Um, I think we've answered most of those now. There's a lot in the Q&A, um, but I, I am conscious of people's time. Uh, we'll try and get through those as quick as we can. Um, still a few coming in. I'll just see what we've got on there. There's another one there I could just jump in on actually. There's other wash options interchangeable. They are interchangeable um, and if they were if it was something for a rapid progression um, we would often look at that it, it's not a huge cost to change a wash arm out if it was uh, something that needed to be changed um, the question in particular was from tracy winchester's progression from child to adult for instance it's not a big job it's not a particularly expensive job to do either so all of those three different wash options are interchangeable as i say everything on a closet mat retrofitable retro removal they are highly adapted Okay, I've um, still got loads coming in. Um, I really don't want to finish the webinar. Well, until we can answer the questions. Um, mm -hmm. We'll try and get through as many as we can. I know the guys, Adam and uh, Kimberly, are frantically typing as well. Uh, we've got <laughs> 36 outstanding on the Q&A at the moment. I'll um, take another one then from Kathleen Snowden because the numbers are still uh, holding there. So are there different lift functions for the air lifts? Yes, there are. Um, we do vertical versions and we do tilting versions. With the vertical version, it, it just goes up and down. So you, know, you can stop it at any point during its path of travel. And the vertical ones are particularly useful for people with types of dystrophy, or if there's uh, just a, a very big difference between maybe man and wife, you know, one's particularly tall, one's particularly small. With the tilting ones, it's possible to change the path of travel. So again, depending on person's stature or on their um, musculature ability, we can change how the, the how the lifter supports them. Um, again, it doesn't have to be set on install; it can be changed, uh, and it might be that we take a decision on where it's set at and it needs changing later on, and we, we would cover all of that. Let's have a little look. See if there's any others on there. Will Closmat do a soft close lid in the future? Um, soft close lids are a bit tricky because they, um, what we want to make sure is that the lids are really strong, that the seat and the lid assembly is, is going to uh, be suitable for side, side transfers from shower chairs and things like that. Most soft close lids deal with um, a pin running through a block of silicon and after a while that they, they break down. Um, we did a slightly different version for another product uh, that had a, a, a just a, a soft drop, so it was just had a little buffer at the end of it. So possibly, good to get some feedback on that. Okay, Larry, I think we'll have to stop it there. The, the advantages of this, certainly if people have left their names on the Q and A, is we can respond directly. So uh, I'll ensure that these go across to Larry and Kimberly, but also to the OT service if um, if we can't answer, and we'll make sure that we answer every Q and A where we've got the details via an email. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Larry. If you could push me on a slide, that would be great. Okay, let me just get rid of the chat. There we go. Great, okay. So just to reiterate, so to finding out more, uh, you'll have this detail on the presentation that we'll send out to yourselves. We will